This video outlines the steps for learning aerial kite loops, starting with the safest possible options, then building from there. Although this video is carefully designed to reduce your risks, kite loops are inherently dangerous and can lead to serious injury. The safest place to start is a heli loop in very light wind that completes on landing. This can be used to help you ride away from a jump when the wind is so light it's hard to regain speed. Launch your jump as normal. Just before landing, dive the kite using the front hand. You'll land riding fairly slowly due to the light wind. So keep steering as hard as possible with the front hand for a small loop. This will drag you downwind, so be ready to aim your board at the kite. This loop may be completed on the surface, but it's great practice. You will learn the importance of steering quickly, and you will learn to keep steering until the kite is climbing. 10 knots of wind is great for your first attempts, then gradually build to stronger wind. The next step is a complete heli loop. This is where the kite loops around into the middle of the sweet spot as you land. If you get it right, you should feel almost weightless on landing. This is largely about timing. If you steer too late, the kite won't return to the high lift zone. If you steer too early, you will have passed through the high lift zone before landing. The direction of your heli loop is also very important. If your kite is on the left, looping it right will get you more time in the sweet spot. If your kite is on the right, looping it left will get you more time in the sweet spot. If your kite is centered, it can help to first move to one side and set yourself up for a better heli loop. To make things a tad more complicated, bear in mind that the faster you descend from a jump, the more the apparent wing climbs and the more the window lifts. Basically, the sweet spot starts to shift upwards over your head at the end of larger jumps. A heli loop can be done with the front hand or the back hand. What makes it a heli loop is the fact it's done at the end of a jump. This is when the kite has crept forward, allowing the loop to stay much higher. This high angle means more lift and less horizontal pull. A back loop initiated earlier in the jump is very different. The kite hasn't had a chance to creep up wind, so it starts deeper in the window and circles much lower. This low angle gives huge horizontal force and minimal lift. This early back loop is often called a powered kite loop. Luckily, there are low risk steps for building up to the powered loop. You can make your first attempts in light wind with a minuscule jump. This is safe because even though you will lose lift from the kite, you are low enough to freefall. It's also safe because even though the kite will catapult you downwind, the wind speed itself is not more than you can handle. Let's walk through the procedure for micro back loops. Ride slowly and steer up slowly. As the kite crosses 12, Pull in for a tiny jump. Don't bother popping or edging much. Then, steer as firmly as possible with the back hand. 
As the loop starts, you accelerate downwind and lose lift. No matter what, it's crucial that you keep steering until the kite is aiming upwards. Touch down with the back of the board, absorb the impact and ride downwind. At this stage, work on getting your kite around quickly. Your kite should not take long to loop. Pulling in fully with one hand and pushing out with the other may give the fastest loop, but not always. It's possible you may get a faster loop with the bar out slightly. I can't give you the exact position because it varies depending on your kite, bar and lines. So keep practicing these training back loops until your kite rockets around. Start in about 10 knots and build to 20 knots. The next step is trying to complete a back loop, then fly the kite up into the high lift zone before landing. It is possible to do this with a jump of about 2 meters if you use the correct technique and kite size. Let's walk through the steps. Ride with medium speed and a firm edge to help you launch a 2 meter jump. Send the kite up fairly slowly though so it doesn't go too deep in the window. As the kite reaches 12, pop hard and pull in the bar for a 2 meter jump. Then it's really useful to wait for just a moment with the kite near 12 because the kite will creep forward slightly which means your loop stays slightly higher. When you are ready, use your fastest possible steering and keep steering rapidly until the kite is aiming at 12. Then push the bar out for a moment, allowing the kite to fly forward faster. Pull in the bar as you land to regain lift. The exact height that you can pull off a loop and regain lift depends on a lot of factors. Here is a kiter easily regaining lift from a 2 meter jump. In this case we have a 10 meter kite flown with a medium large bar with a brief pause at 12 and very fast steering. On the other hand, here is a kiter only just regaining lift after a 6 meter jump. In this case there was a 12 meter kite with a smaller bar and the loop was initiated without a pause at 12, so the kite circled lower. To get started, it's good to be slightly underpowered on a 7 to 10 meter kite and use a slight pause at 12. Of course, if you go out in a bit more wind and jump higher, you get plenty of time to complete a loop and regain lift. But bear in mind you will pay heavily for any mistakes and things do get a bit more complicated with stronger wind and higher jumps. Because you are jumping higher, the kite starts deeper in the window and loops lower. You will then have a much longer free fall as the kite climbs. This longer free fall causes the apparent wind to rise significantly, which raises the window as well as the sweet spot. The high lift zone can end up directly over your head. See how lift only comes back now once the kite is overhead. Let's review the technique for these larger powered loops. Launch a larger jump. As you climb, steer hard with the back hand, keep steering until the kite is aiming upwards. At this point you must have the bar out to help the kite fly forwards quickly. Pulling in the bar would slow the kite. As the kite flies over your head, lift will come back. 
pull in the bar for lift and to slow the kite. Of course you land hurtling downwind and your kite is aiming upwind. You need either very firm steering or a heli loop to stop the kite flying behind you. If you don't get the kite in front of you, you can expect it to drift or drop. I hope it's obvious there are huge risks here. You are playing a dangerous and exciting game of hunt the sweet spot. If your kite stalls at this stage of the loop, it won't fly back above your head. This could happen because of a badly trimmed kite, gear malfunction, or simply because of a lull in the wind. Equally, with higher jumps, the kite can easily fly clean across the high lift zone. It could end up hugely upwind and start losing lift. If the kite is heading too far upwind and losing lift, you will need a well-timed heli loop to keep the kite above your head. As mentioned, it is possible to set yourself up for a more forgiving heli loop. In this case, complete your powered back loop, then aim the kite slightly to one side of the window, which will set you up to heli loop the other way, circling 12 o'clock and maintaining lift. Thanks for watching and safe kiting to all of you.